What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly build series where I tell you guys which parts you should choose when you're gonna build your own computer. This is May 2020. For the first time in quite some time, I don't think you should build a computer right now. Excellent. Yes, you heard me right. I actually think that right now is not the best time to be building or buying your own computer. I have my reasons why, and I'll be explaining that in just a second. But first, in case you were coming to this video to hopefully watch me build a computer, which I'm not gonna be doing today, uh, check out my builds playlist, which I will link down in the video's description, where you can see me doing lots of different PC builds. Alternatively, if you're interested in how to build a computer, if you already have all the parts you need, check out my how to build a gaming PC playlist. I have a beginner's tutorial series and that should walk you through all the steps from A to Z, including setup, software installation, and getting you to the point where you're actually gaming on your gaming PC. Also in the description, you will find links to a straw poll where you can vote on what PC builds you want to see in June next month. For this month, you guys gave me what turned out to be a really, really difficult task because most people wanted to see a budget build with the new Ryzen 3100 or 3300X. Those have been announced as of May 7th. They are supposed to launch May 21st, but uh, certain places that actually are listing them, like BNH over here, says availability June 3rd. So I'm not sure if there is gonna be a limited supply at initial launch, but we will have to wait and see for that. And then the runner-up was just another 3600 or 3600X based system, which is pretty much the go-to CPU right now if you're building a gaming PC or a gaming slash multi-purpose PC. I had a few other options down here at the bottom, including the uh, new Intel LGA 1200 series, which has been announced, but still has not yet launched. And we're still about one week away from seeing actual benchmark results, those should be available on May 20th for the new Intel LGA 1200 series. And whatever you might be thinking from the get-go about Intel's uh, new 10th gen core processors, starting with the 10900K and all the way down to the i3s, you really should wait at least a week until May 20th or after to see the benchmark results for those and to see the pricing for those and to see if, especially in the week or two after the launch, if the pricing falls out and changes because it typically takes a week or two after a new product series hits the market for all of the pricing to sort of normalize. That's one reason why I think you should wait, but there are others. Uh, also down there, you will find, of course, that straw poll for June. And here I'm just focusing focusing on two platforms because we will have B550 in mid-June. June 16th is the set launch date for B550. Hopefully we'll be able to test some boards before then, but we will see. And then of course that Intel 10th gen stuff is launching in about, uh, about a week from today as of when this video goes up. And they might have some good options down in the budget range with those new quad-core uh, i3s with hyper-threading. Of course, they're going to have mid-range CPUs available, and they could possibly, potentially, theoretically still have what you might call the fastest pure gaming PC, the successor to the 9900K and the 10900K, so I could do something based on that as well. Of course, all that remains to be seen, so uh, hold out for another week, week and a half, and you should be able to get your eyes on some Intel 10th Gen benchmark results, and then you should be able to make a more informed decision as to whether or not that's a platform you're interested in or whether you're just gonna write it off and wait for Intel to actually launch 10 nanometer or maybe even seven, seven nanometer CPUs. The next reason why you might wanna wait right now to buy new computer hardware has to do with AMD's recent announcements. And I did a video on what B550 can and can't do. B550 is a new budget chipset. And as you can see from this chart here in that video, B550 or X570 motherboards are going to be required for the upcoming future AMD 4000 series uh, Zen 3 based CPUs. Those aren't expected until late 2020 or possibly even early 2021. So this is fairly forward looking, but it does inform those who are buying a new system right now who might have otherwise bought B450 or X470. If you want compatibility with those upcoming generations of CPUs, you're probably gonna wanna invest in X570 right now or wait for B550 to launch, which again is June 16th. I also did a video on those 10th gen Intel Core desktop announcements like the 10900K and all the product stacks there. So feel free to check out that video if you want a little bit more details on what's coming out in about a week. So all that is to say, if you're buying a computer right now and you wanna go with the go-to architecture that's being recommended right now, which is an AMD 3000 series processor, and you want either uh, an existing go-to 3600X or 3600 or the new 3300X or 3100, you probably want to pair it with a 500 series motherboard 
motherboard because you get PCI Express 4.0 and you get that forward compatibility with 4000 series in the future. So you might have even an even better upgrade path than just upgrading to an existing 3900X or 3950X. Now, assuming you can get your hands on a 3300X in a little over a week or about a week from now, what you're probably gonna wanna pair it with is a 500 series motherboard, but you can't quite do that yet. Right now you're limited to 400 series motherboards and those are just gonna be somewhat limited. So if you don't need PCI Express 4.0, if you don't want to have the option to upgrade to a 4000 series CPU when it launches, then yes, you are okay with B450, but you should go into it knowing that, and that was one of my big mistakes in the video I did on B550 last week, was I didn't really account for people who already just bought B450 with the anticipation that, oh, 4000 series is coming, and it should be forward compatible because of the promises AMD made about AM4. I'm not gonna get into a discussion of both sides of that decision that AMD made. Instead, let's get into the actual parts list because I think I've done enough introduction for this video already. So here is my May builds, the first one that you guys asked for, which was a 3300X base system. It ended up coming in at $820, and I labeled this the ill-advised 3300X X570 build, because again, you're just better off waiting for about three weeks until B550 launches if you want a really perfect or more ideal pairing for a 3300X. In this parts list, I opted for a B450 option. So again, you're not gonna get that Gen 4 compatibility and you're not gonna get that upgrade path to 4000 series, but you will get a functional motherboard and you can upgrade your 3300X to a 3700X or 3900X or 3950X. So it's not like you've got nowhere to go. One of the other things I really like about the 3300X launch being a good quad core for a reasonable price of $120 is you can spend more money on your graphics card. And I think this is a great solution to sort of claw your way up to the entry level RTX, which would be the RTX 2060. That's gonna be a $300 part. So the most expensive part of the system, but it's gonna get you a really nice jump in gaming performance over your $150 to $200 cards. And this also gives you an option if you wanted to do gaming and streaming potentially at the same time, even though it's often recommended to go with a six core or better processor for that. You can get by with a quad core and then use the NVENC encoder in your RTX card to do the video encoding and you can still have a, a, a very good experience. Beyond that, I chose parts that I think line up well with the rest of the stuff and the total price down here is uh, about $816 right now. I ran it up to $820 for the sake of a nice even number. But again, here's that, uh, oh, 3100. What? Okay, so I don't have a good explanation for this. It's probably just early product listings and it will probably be fixed at, at some point. But BNH has the pre-order available for the 3100 and the 3300X. 3300X, they're selling for 110 for some reason. That's a great bargain. You should jump on that right now. Oh, unfortunately you can't pre-order it at that price. At the same time, do not pre-order the 3100 for $120 because this should be a $99 part. But just to help clarify some of these product listings, as I move through today, you're gonna find some of the other reasons why setting this video up was a challenge because there's really limited availability of a lot of parts right now at the same time. But here it is, 3300X, four cores and eight threads should be available for $120. And the date that AMD gave us was May 21st, although so uh, B&H is saying June 3rd. Maybe check other retailers like uh, Amazon and Newegg closer to the 21st and see if they have it on stock on that date. I will be following up on that as well, probably in separate videos. Here's the motherboard I chose because I wanted an alternative to the MSI B450 Tomahawk that I've recommended many, many times. This is the Gaming Plus Max, which is really, really similar to the Tomahawk. In fact, even has a lot of the same power delivery configurations. So this is a good board for the price of $105. It's about $10 less than the Tomahawk. Uh, the Tomahawk is over over here. And here's another thing that's happening right now with some of these popular boards that aren't in stock uh, directly from Newegg or other retailers like Amazon. It's being sold by a third party seller, Outlet PC in this case for $350. And, and I hope you guys realize that no one should buy it for that much. The Tomahawk Max is what you should be going for anyway. That's also sold out and set to auto notify. I have a feeling that because B550 is about to come out, probably also a result of the uh, human malware as Gamers Nexus is calling it, that's across the world right now. So. Uh, uh, ma manufacturing has been somewhat limited. We're seeing a lot of out of stock products when it comes to B450 motherboards. Another reason why it's probably not a good time to buy right now because, because if you're dealing with a limited selection, you're not gonna be able to get what you want and what is in stock is probably going to be overpriced. Amazon is allowing you to add the gaming, uh, the MSI Gaming Plus Max to your cart, but it's, only, it's not in stock until June 19th, which is after the B550 motherboards launch, so that's not gonna do you any good. So if you're looking at these choices and you're like, Paul, what should I buy right now? Remember what I said before, don't. Don't buy right now. Wait a few weeks. 
I'm still gonna press on with this video though. Uh, the rest of the parts are largely parts that I have uh, either recommended before or sometimes tested myself, like this G-Skill Rip Jaws 5 kit, which is a 16 gig kit, 3600 speed memory, which is ideal for Ryzen 3 setups. It's even got pretty decent timings at cast latency 16. It's not 16 across the board, but you can always play with those timings and see if you get a, a good overclocking kit possibly. But the 3600 speed is really what's gonna impact uh, your infinity fabric when it comes to the Ryzen 3000 series chips and for 80 bucks about, uh, this, is, this is a good deal. For storage, I am recommending at least a 250 gig SATA SSD. Uh, those tend to go for about 35 to $40. Uh, spend about 20 bucks more and you can get a 500 gig class SSD like this 512 gig ADATA SU750. This is a little bit of an upgrade over the 630 that I've recommended because it doesn't use QLC uh, NAND. Um, but hey, for 60 bucks, solid drive for your main operating system, as well as a fair assortment of games and applications. Here's the video card, and here's where I just used a parametric filter. So all we're looking at over here is RTX 2060 Supers, sorting them by price and adding the cheapest one. FYI, if you're considering the EVGA KO Gaming or the EVGA KO Ultra Gaming, and they're the same price, get the Ultra. It comes overclocked to 755 megahertz out of the box, and then you don't have to do it yourself. There are now some other RTX 2060s around the $300 price, um, but don't pay too much more than $300 bucks because honestly, uh, these KO gaming cards really set the standard when it comes to the price that the RTX 2060s should sell for. For a case, you have quite a few options down in the $60 to $80 range. I chose the Fractal Design Define C this time around because it's a good case, it's well built, it comes with nice fans, I feel like it has a nice clean design to it, and uh, you know, it's not terribly expensive either. About $84 is a good price for that. When you get up to the $100-ish range that places like Newegg and Amazon are charging for that. It becomes a little bit less competitive, but hey, apparently Walmart has it for 84 bucks. Is this actually in stock, Walmart? And hey, it looks like it's actually in stock too. Available by May 19th, not too bad. Finally, we need a power supply in here. Once again, I've gone with the EVGA BR series 600 watts. Uh, it's 80 plus bronze. You want at least 80 plus bronze if you can't claw your way up to gold. It's only about $65 and that's without a mail-in rebate. So that's a pretty decent price for this. It has all black cabling. It's not modular, that's inconvenience, but just make sure the case you get has a basement in the bottom like the Fractal Defined C does. And then you'll tuck away all these extra cables down there and you won't see them. It's hard to get those nice upgrades in a power supply that you kind of want to go for now like getting 80 plus gold or getting fully mo modular, at least without getting closer to like 100 bucks. But with 600 watts available, this is gonna get you by with just about any graphics card upgrade you might want to drop in there, as long as you're not going for a two-way setup or like an RTX 2080 Ti. That's pretty much it for my first build, which again, I don't recommend anyone buying right now. I know this is weird because this is a, a video series where I recommend what people should buy and I'm telling you not to, but uh, just, just wait, just give it a little bit of time because I think what you'll find is that for this price of around $800, maybe $820, you'll be able to put together this exact same system. Uh, hopefully some of the parts that aren't in stock do come into stock and you'll be able to get a B550 motherboard. It's probably gonna be maybe $140 to $160 for the B550 motherboard, um, but that will give you PCI Express 4.0 support and that will also give you that forward compatibility with the Ryzen 4000 series. Now my second build, I, I, I kind of gave up on to be to be perfectly honest, and that was because I took my initial build and I reconfigured it with the 3600, and I was like, all right, what would I upgrade from that less expensive build to kind of line up with the 3600 a little bit better? For the most part, I, I've got the same stuff, same memory kit, that works fine, same SSD, that works just fine, same graphics card, case, power supply, that's good. Of course, the easiest thing to swap out here is gonna be the case, maybe the power supply, any ATX case that you like the aesthetics of that has good reviews and ideally good airflow and probably, hopefully, ships with at least a couple fans will get you by just fine with this build. The difficult thing is again, finding that motherboard that pairs with the 3600 right now that I would say, yes, buy this right now, which I can't really do. Here are my motherboard choices right now if I wanted X570 and I would do that so I could maintain that PCIe 4.0 and the forward compatibility with 4000 series. These are gonna start around, I, I mean, you got the ASRock Phantom Gaming 4S for $144, not the best reviewed motherboard. I was looking at the MSI MPG X570 Gaming Plus because this one's actually pretty decent has good reviews, has actually a decent power delivery setup, but yet again, trying to buy it on Amazon, it's not in stock until May 24th, which is 
soon, I suppose, or at least sooner than sometime in June. But again, you'd be paying extra here for X570 that you wouldn't need to pay if you were just gonna get the B550 variant of this motherboard, which I would guess would probably be 20, 25 bucks cheaper. Also, the lower priced slash more entry level X570 motherboard that I would recommend right now would be this one right here. I've recommended this in the past. It's the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. Solid power delivery, good looking board. And it's one that I really don't have any, any issues recommending. Uh, well, well done, Asus, on that one. Uh, let's see if we can buy it at Newegg. No, it is not available. See similar items, which means they don't even have a restock lined up at this point. So yeah, over the past couple months, I've done a few of these parts lists and I've gone in and looked at stock and what's available. And I've actually been pretty happy to see that uh, for anyone who's stuck at home right now, who's under quarantine or lockdown or whatever, does have some pretty reasonable options for ordering online, getting parts in, and setting themselves up a computer. At the same time though, I did receive some warnings that uh, some of the retailers had stocked up prior to the pandemic starting to give them more stock to sort of last through it, but maybe some of that stock is starting to dry up. We're also right on the cusp of sort of a, sh a changeover when it comes to motherboard series is going from B450 to B550, as well as the big shift on Intel from the LGA 115X stuff in the past to LGA 1200. And when that happens in the best of times, there's always problems with products going out of stock, going end of life with uh, retailers clearing out space for the new inventory that they're expecting to come in. And so while I always try to have something to tell you guys like here, work on this instead, I think right now you should wait at least a week for the Intel stuff to come out before you start putting anything together. And more ideally, if you do decide to go with an AMD build, definitely worth waiting until mid-June when the B550 stuff launches so you can take advantage of the pricing of those so there can be a little bit more chance for stock to come in so there's a wider range of options and just to see the actual performance of some of this new stuff that's expected to come out that we can't talk about the performance of yet. That's all for this video though guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll put links to as much stuff as I'm not recommending you buy down in the description below. If you're down there and you want to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video that's also greatly appreciated and don't forget to check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts like this awesome, awesome hardware shirt, as well as a ton of other merch, shirts, mugs, pint glasses, bottle openers. It's all real nice. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.